Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh And very good morning To Madam Rozia binti Muhammad Zain And my fellow classmate Today, me myself, Muhammad Hafiz bin Rostam 289816 with my group members We present Voyages of Exploration and Discovery of New Lands Okay, this is my group member Uh, including myself, Arizak Wan bin Rushdi, 288179, Sharizat bin Salbi, 287105, and lastly, Muhammad Iqbal Najmi, Muhammad Jamil, 288269. And there the table of content. There we have introduction, then factors leading to European voyages, thirdly, Voyages of Exploration and Discovery of New Lands There are 5 Portuguese, Spain, French, British and Dutch 4. How the Western Power Benefits from the Expedition And lastly, Conclusion And now, I will give Arif to present his introduction For the introduction, the Age of Exploration, or also known as what historians call it as Age of Discovery, it is a period of time where Europeans embark on their journey to discover the new world of new routes. And it is said to be between 1450 until 1650. And there are two main European countries that are said to be the pioneers of the expedition, which is Portugal and Spain. It is followed by France, British and also Dutch. This expedition's objective are mainly about the three Gs, which is uh, the gold, glory, and also gospel. And in this period, it was one of the significant era that plays a vital role in terms of Europeans to search a purpose that could lead them to fulfill that objective. Okay, thank you, Arif. Now, I will continue to present the factors that leading to European voyages. I first, the trade between the European nation and regions in the Far East to trade with the Asian such as India, Chinese and Malayan. The European did not really travel far from their homeland and only some of them were given access to travel only as far as Venice, Lombard and Constantinople. These places were the trading center of Europe continent back to, to, to ancient time due to geographical strategic place to trade goods between west and east. But the most renowned city was the great city of Constantinople. Early European exploration was carried out by small groups of people supported by private corporations and bankers throughout the 15th century and 16th century. It was also a demand of Catholicism that Christianity must be the global religion and faith among all humanity and this was one of the steps taken by the church. Assalamu alaikum, my name is Sharizan bin Zaldi, the 7105. I'm going to present about Portuguese exploration. The Portuguese sailor was a leader of European who started to explore, discovering, and mapping around the world, especially Africa, Asia, and Brazil. This is the beginning of the Portuguese Navy establishment of Genoese Mission Community in Portugal. Half of the 14th century, the economy was extremely localized in a few towns, unemployment rose, and migration led to agriculture land. Portugal's Prince Henry the Navigator began his country's exploration of Africa and the Atlantic in the 40,000s. With the support of the Portuguese mariners, has successfully navigated an eastward route to Africa, establishing a foothold there and become a foundation of the nation's strength empire in the 15th and 16th centuries. European did not know what happened beyond Cape Pajador, the African coast. Portuguese mariners built an Atlantic empire by colonizing the Canary, Cape Verde and Azores Island and also the island of Madeira. 
in the exploration of the African coast, Portuguese saw the value of the source of labor in growing the profitable crop of sugar on the Atlantic islands. The Portuguese soon began to export African slaves along with African ivory and gold. The long distance Portuguese goal of finding a sea route to Asia was finally achieved from the voyage commanded by Vasco da Gama. His squadron left Portugal in 1497 the Cape and continued along the East Africa coast and pilot guided them across the Indian Ocean, reaching Kalika, India in May 1498. This helped to establish a commercial monopoly for several de decades, following up on Nagama's pioneering voyage. Three years later, the king entrusted Cabral with the command of the second major expedition to India, expressing the great confidence where he had in Pedro Alvarez de Covia, nobleman of four households. The second voyage to India was dispatched in 15,000 under Pedro Alvarez. While following the same route as the Gama across the Atlantic Ocean, Cabral made landfall of the Brazilian coast. In 1511, Alfonso de Albuquerque sailed to Malacca in Malaysia, which is the most important eastern point in the trade network where Malay met Chinese, Gujarati, Java, Japanese, Persian, Bengali, and Arabic traders. Malacca became the strategic base for Portuguese trade expansion with China and the Southeast Asia. The Portuguese Empire expanded into the Persian Gulf as Portugal contested control of the spice trade with the Ottoman Empire. Moving on to Spanish expedition. If we are talking about Spanish expedition, Christopher Columbus would not be a rare name. In fact, he is the one who led the first expedition launched by the Spanish in August 1492. Columbus set off from Palos de la Frontera with three ships, which is the Santa Maria, Pinta and Santa Clara. As we all know, the Asian island near China and India were renowned for their spices and gold, making it an important spot for Europeans. Columbus planned a way to reach Asia by sailing west across the Atlantic, believing it would be faster and safer, which later on proved to be wrong. Originally, Columbus' idea did fascinate Queen Isabella of Castile and Ferdinand II of Aragon from the Spanish monarch. However, the proposal was rejected because at the time, they were too accompanied with the battle with the Muslim. Not until January 1492, the Spanish army finally seized the final Muslim fortress in Granada thanks to Columbus' relentless lobbying of the royal court. The monarch finally decided to fund his voyage shortly after that. Moving on, Columbus and his crewmen reached land on the 12th October 1492 on what is currently known as Bahamas. His crewmen came into a cautious but welcoming group of locals who were willing to sell glass bead, cotton balls, parrot and spear with the sailors. Columbus and his crew resumed their expedition, stopping on the island of Cuba, which uh, Columbus mistook for the mainland China, and Hispaniola, the present-day Haiti and Dominican Republic, which Columbus mistook for Japan. The Santa Maria was wrecked on reef on the coast of Hispaniola during this time, and Columbus' men saved what they could save and founded the settlement of Villa de la Navidad, with the lumber from the ship and the help of some islanders. 39 men remained the settlement to occupy it. With two remaining ships, he set sail for home, convinced that his exploration had reached Asia. Uh, when Columbus returned to Spain in 1493, his finding of the new land were enthusiastically received by the royal court. In addition, Columbus had been said to explore the north coast of South America, which he believed was mainland Asia. However, when his plot, uh, however, he did not reach the continent until his third expedition, when he explored the Orinoco River in modern-day Venezuela. Despite being credited with recovering the New World, Christopher Columbus always believed he had arrived in Asia. However, Amerigo Vespucci proved that it is not Asia, but rather a different continent. Another explorer that is worthy to be mentioned in Spanish exploration is Ferdinand Magellan. Magellan's voyage proposal is similar to what King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella had supported before, which is Christopher Columbus' voyage to the New World. King Charles I, who was only 18 years old at the time, extended his assistance to Magellan, who told the young king that his westward sea journey would bring enormous wealth to Spain. 
his Portuguese explorer, set out from Spain with five fleet of ships, with a fleet of five ships to discover a western sea road to Spice Island on 10 August 1519. The Armada de Moluccas departed with Magellan bidding farewell to his wife and little boy whom he would never see again. Magellan was in command of the Trinidad, which was accompanied by four additional ships, the San Antonio, Conception, Victoria and Santiago. After a long and difficult journey, Magellan finally discovered the state of Magellan and became the first European to cross the Pacific Ocean. Magellan voyage landed on the Homohon Island in the Philippines on March 16, 1521. He was the first island uh, European visitor. The chief of Cebu, Raja Humabon, was pleased and honored with the Magellan arrival. Hence, Raja Humabon openly accepted Christianity and converts to it. On the other hand, their arrival, Lapu-Lapu, was not very welcoming to the European. Magellan sought to convert Lapu-Lapu to Christianity, but Humabon wanted to murder Lapu-Lapu. Magellan said to Macton on April 17, 1521, and the in, uh, however, the Indians guided by Lapu-Lapu murdered him in the subsequent fight. Only the Victoria made it around the world, arriving in Seville, Spain in September 1522 with a cargo of spices, but only 18 of the original crew members, including the Italian scholars and adventurer, Antonio Pigafetta. Pigafetta journey log is an important account of the crew's experience on the way home. After Magellan's death, the master of the ship Concepcion, Juan Sebastian de Elcano, assumed command of the expedition and led the ship Victoria back to Spain. He and his troop were the first to circumnavigate the globe in a single trip. It took another 16 months for Elcano to return to Spain after Magellan's death in Cebu. Magellan and Elcano voyage took over three years to complete, beginning in the west and ending in the east. Nonetheless, uh, the mission was historically significant because it was the first to circumnavigate the globe and show that the earth was round. Next, the French exploration. The French took a long time to become interested in the New World. Their attention was only directed westward after a French pirate captured a Spanish ship filled with Mexican gold and silver. In the 17th century, France began to construct uh, colonies in North America, the Caribbean and the India. Of course, like any other colonizer, the French arrived in the New World as an explorer looking for a way to cross the Pacific Ocean and claim its riches. Under the reign of Francis I, France dispatched a few navigators to investigate the New World in order to discover a northwest passage to India. Major French exploration of North America began when the Francis dispatched Giovanni de Verrazzano, an Italian-born explorer. In 1524, with two ships funded by Francis I, Verrazzano set off to explore the area between Florida and Newfoundland in search for a path to the Pacific Ocean. He first sailed to the West Indies, then to the coast of North America. He landed in the modern-day North Carolina first and then continued north beyond Sandy Hook and into New York Harbor. The Hudson River was swiftly proven not to be a strait. Therefore, the trip continued to Narragansett Bay and found another dead end. Verzano continued on beyond Cape Cod and Maine, Nova Scotia and Newfoundland later in his journey. Verzano gave the territory between New Spain and the English Newfoundland the names Francesca and Nova Gallia to promote the French interest. This expedition established a French claim to these areas, although it was viewed as a failure uh, at the time due to the failure to find a route to the east. Moving on, the next explorer that also had a major impact in French is Jacques Cartier. He sailed to the New World for the first time in 1534 under the French's the first patronage. France was enticed by the Spanish incredible wealth and aspired to replicate it elsewhere in the America. Cartier's ship traveled into the Gulf of Este Lawrence around the northern tip of the Newfoundland and along its western coast. Cartier landed on the Gibbs of Venezuela and claimed the territory for France. The explorers made friends with the locals and learned about the abundance of gold and diamond further inland from them. 
Cartier established the New France by placing a cross on the gates of Peninsula. In 1541, he attempted to establish the first permanent European settlement in the North America with 400 inhabitants at Cape Road, which is the Quebec City. But the town was abandoned the next year. Overall, the first expedition of Jacques Cartier influenced the French perception of North America. The area's only wolf had previously been thought to be for its fishery only. Cartier's report, on the other hand, spoke of the fertile plains and the potential for mineral wealth. In 1642, he pushed his way up to the river of a native town at the foot of a big mountain called Ville Marie, which he dubbed as Montreal. Montreal followed by more establishment of the other trading port such as Fort Pochatrain du Detroit, Detroit, La Nouvelle Orleans, New Orleans. However, Cartier was still viewed as a failure, notwithstanding his contribution to an improved grasp of North American geography. This is due to the fact that there were no gold discovered and no permanent settlement were established. Another notable event that should be mentioned during this period is the Treaty of Aix-la-Chapelle, 1748. The treaty emerged in the 18th century due to a great competition between the French and Britain to expand their territory in India. The main idea of the treaty is to bring an end to the war for the Austrian succession. With a few exceptions, it returned the conquered land to its rightful owners. The British and French drew out the term, which Empress Maria Theresa of Austria grudgingly accepted after she was forced to hand over Silesia to Frederick II of Perusia. Don Philip, the youngest son of Philip V of Spain, was given Parma in Italy. The Anglo-French struggle in India and North America was temporarily halted by this pact. In order to guarantee the return of Madras to Britain, colonists in North America reluctantly ceded the French fortress of Louisbourg. Perusia's accession to great power status status was bitterly despised by Austria. Many conflicts remained unresolved as a result of the pact, and war, the Seven Years' War, erupted eight years later. England's forays into the New World began in 1497, just a few years after Columbus' initial voyage, with John Cabot's journey to North America. British exploration on the New World could center on searching for the Northwest Passage through the continent. From 1480 onward, it had supplied several expeditions to look for the mythical high Brazil. According to the Celtic legend, this island lay somewhere in the Atlantic Ocean. There was a people's belief among Russians that Bristol men had discovered the island and an early death, but they lost track of it. Because the island was believed to be a source of Brazil, Russians had economic incentive to find the island. Cabot started to explore the North America coast and deduced that the spherical shape of the Earth map met the north, where the lake longitude are much shorter than the trip to the island itself where Columbus was exploring. Sir Walter Raleigh established an empire in the New World after having gained considerable favor from the Queen Elizabeth I by suppressing rebellions in the island. On March 25, 1548, the Queen granted relief charter for the colonization. Relief himself never visited North America, although he led expedition in 1595 and in 1617 to South America's Orinoco River, was seen in the search of the legendary coding city known as El Dorado. Supply the colonies became a burden due to the continued war with Spain. The the end of the colony in 1587 is unrecorded as a result of the North Settlement is referred to as the Lost Colony. Henry Hudson was an English sea explorer and a navigator in the early 17th century. He made two attempts on behalf of an English merchant to find a prospective northwest passage via a route above the Arctic Circle. On April 22, 1607, the Muscovy Company sent Hudson to seek a North Pole to Japan and China. They believed that Hudson would find an ice free sea route. He reached the edge of the polar ice pack and then followed it east until reached the Slavats Spitsbergen archipelago. After 
that on April 22, 16N, he once again solved for Norway Passage. But this time he started to exploration between South Park and the island of Novaya Zemlya, which lie to the east of the Barents Sea. Dutch Expeditions In the early 16th century, the Dutch was under the reign of Spanish, which was under the power of Philip II. So who is Philip II? Philip II, or should I call him King Philip II, is the King of Spain and also the Lords of Netherlands. So the reason King Philip have control of Dutch is because the Dutch and Spain was at war in the 80 years war. And ironically, most of the province was under the control of Spain, such as Netherlands, Luxembourg, and Belgium. This shown that King Philip had control of the Iberian Peninsula. So, when he had the power, King Philip closed the port of Lisbon to disrupt the Dutch source of income, which is because they have become the middlemen in trading. So, although port of Lisbon was closed, the Dutch was very optimistic with the situation that Lisbon has been closed. So they tried to be dominant in spice trading in the east. And the reason why they were interested in spice trading is because of highly demanded by the European countries. Well, this is because when we look back in our history, in the early 16th centuries, the bubonic plague has been a pandemic to them. So they believe that by using spices like uh, nutmeg and coriander, it could heal themselves from being infected by the bubonic plague. And, however, the spice only supplied by Spice Island that is located in Indonesia. On April 2, 1595, nine Amsterdam merchants joined together by organizing a first expedition which was led by Cornelius de Hutman. They sailed through the Portuguese sailing routes along the west coast of Africa around the Cape of Good Hope and also along the Indian Oceans. And they managed to get to Bantam Island in 1569. The first expedition can be categorized as a major fiasco and also a success for the Dutch. And for the second expedition, it was led by Jacob van Neck in 1599. And this expedition was considered as a success for Holland as they gained profitable explorations. So the Dutch wanted to strengthen their trading position by establishing very niche us in this compact BOC, or should I call it as Dutch East India Company in 1602. And the purpose of VOC is to monopolize trade activities in the East. Jakarta or Jakarta was turned into the VOC headquarters after the Dutch slaughtered the people by burning down the town. In August 3, 1640, the Dutch tried to conquer Malacca from the Portuguese. At first, the Dutch could not penetrate the fort of Malacca, but they were patient enough to attack during the night time by building a bridge. And after they conquered Malacca, they were considered as the dominant traders in terms of spice trading in the East. How the Western power benefit from the expedition? During the age of exploration, geography was greatly influenced the Westerners to explore around the world, exploring the world and retaining with the goods and wider information that they gained allow explorers to learn more about the world outside of Europe continent as a consequence of the exploration of persons such Prince Henry the Navigator, the advance in navigation and mapping research had been made more detailed. The traditional portland charts which were based on coasts and ports of call and kept the sailors near to land before his travel were used by navigator before him were not used then. The European finally being more advanced than their rivals, such as Islamic Kingdom of Ottoman Empire, that they have seen the Islamic people going through the Golden Age of Islam in the 13th century under the Abbasid Caliphate, and the European still under the Dark Ages as a result of as the expedition European were exposed to a whole new world of exotic plants and animals such as potatoes and ilama. 
During the age of exploration, knowledge of the world geography was bolstered among explorers. More individuals were able to visit and learn about many parts of the world, and as a result, which led to a surge in geographic research and the creation of technology and knowledge, much of what we know world today. As for the conclusion, voyage of exploration and discovery of new land bring a significant value to the history of mankind. This is because mankind learns to explore the world by trading and discover new lands in the east. Portuguese and Spanish had become the pioneers in the field of navigation and followed by the British, France and Dutch. Therefore, this is the end of the presentation. Thank you. That's all from us. Thank you for listening to our presentation.